Hello and welcome to the Woo Woo Worship, or rather, Worship Your Woo Woo debate with Superdrug. My name is Lisa McLaughlin and I'm joined by a fabulous panel of awe-inspiring yeah. women <laughs> to discuss modern attitudes about sexual health and sex. Recent research by Woo Woo revealed that women are currently lying about the number of sexual partners they've had and are failing to go and get sexual health screening, ultimately leaving themselves at risk because they're afraid of being judged. Now Woo Woo and Superdrug have partnered together to bring this to the public's attention and to, you know, talk about it more openly. Yeah, talk about it. Yes. But before we get started, I think we want to welcome everyone through Superdrug's Instagram. We would like to have you share some comments and questions to be a part of this discussion as much as we are. Now, to the lovely panel, I'm going to introduce you here. We've got the Woo Woo founder, Lucy Anderson. Thank okay. you for joining us. We've got Love Island star and Worship Your Woo Woo, <laughs> brand ambassador, Megan Burton Hansen. We've got Anika Murphy, who's also a sexual health advisor. And last, but definitely not least, <laughs> Helen Flaxman of Superdrug. Thank you, ladies, for coming to us today. Thank you. You know, pleasure. I really want to just open this up. We mentioned a little bit about the research there. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about it, Lucy? Yeah, so we surveyed 1,500 women in the UK. And on average, they said they'd had 10 sexual partners. But then... 60% of them said they'd lied about this. Mm. And we found that truly shocking, and we were trying to work out why, why this was happening and what was wrong with our society that women felt ashamed of their sexual part partners and their sexual yeah. history. Mm. Yeah, and you know what? I've shouted to you before, Megan, about this. And, you know, you're so proud of being a sexual woman. Like, what did you think about this research when it kind of came to light? It made me so sad, because mm. I think, especially with, like, my close friends, obviously you don't go around telling yeah. everyone the number of sexual partners <laughs> you've had. But any girl that asks me, I will be so honest with her, and there's no shame in it. If a guy done exactly the same, and he said, I don't know, 50, yeah. 100, they'll be like, go on, lad, do it. Like, so why can't yeah. we? It's not about being proud, like, oh, the more the merrier and the more you do, like, the bigger person you are. But if, as a woman, you enjoy sex and you're practicing safe sex, enjoy your life. Don't feel ashamed at all. I know, preach better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, Annika, I have to say as well, why, why do you think women are lying? I see a lot of women coming into the clinic quite regularly, and it takes them a while to sort of open up to me about their sort of magic number, as it were. Mm. And I think that's because they do see a lot of people on social media who are open and honest about their sexuality be kind of um, sort of shamed as well. So I think that's like a major cause. And what do you think going forward can kind of stop that? Just talking openly and honestly mm. like we are mm. today, I think yeah. that's really, really important. I know, and Megan, as someone that's been in the public eye, and God, you've had a lot of social media backlash when you were in the Love Island house. And you've mentioned before how your friend used to have to turn off the comments and everything on your social media during that time. What would you say to the girls that are going through that now? What advice would you give them to, to people that are kind of getting backlash for talking about their sexuality? Yeah, I had a massive backlash. And it wasn't even like I was being outrageous. And I slept with like five people in the space of like seven weeks. I slept with two guys, one of which I was with for two weeks and then yeah. the other for the duration and six months after. Yeah. But because I was a woman and I'd done that, they were like, oh my God, it's outrageous. But Adam done exactly the same, Wes done exactly the same, and no questions asked, like it was just normal. But because I'm a woman and I done that, oh, like shame on you. So I think as long as you're happy, all your close friends and family will back you. It's, you're not hurting anyone. There's so much like hate and negativity in the world. If you're gonna do something, it's an intimate moment between two people. Don't feel ashamed about it. Yeah, as it says that. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> but you do pick up on a good point there. Like, you know, if you're in love or if you have an, a connection with someone, then why don't you feed into it? And there is this kind of... It was a bit of a witch hunt, I will admit, when you had set with two people. It was like, come on, people do that on the weekend. Like, it's not... I so know. It was like the biggest question in every interview. It's like, oh, so how do you feel that you set with two people? Are you embarrassed? I was like, hell no, I'm not embarrassed. Like, on the outside world, if I had dated someone for a week and a half and I thought he was good looking, which I did with Liao, of course I'm going to sleep with him. I'm not going to hold back just in case I'm judged. And I think the more people like me with a bit of a platform, with young girls watching them, it's not saying sleep with everyone, but if you have that connection with someone, you're practicing safe sex and you feel that, a man would do it, so why can't we as women? Yeah, exactly. Here, here. Like, yeah, I, I, absolutely. You know, but as she says as well, you know, it still seems like, you know, female sexual pleasure is a bit of a taboo in the 21st century. Um, 
And I mean, it's something that I think I would be still too afraid to discuss with my friends. I don't know if it's just a bit of an Irish thing, you know, growing up in a Catholic society where you just don't really mention those things. But what do you think is kind of behind it, Lucy? I think there's a lot of social conditioning behind it. It, it baffles me that we're in 2019 and mm. society's still mm. like this mm. and women still feel ashamed of things that they do. I think it's completely irrational and wrong. And we want women to feel confident, we want them to be able to make decisions based on what they want, not on what society expects of them. Yeah, that's exactly, and that is a good point, what society ex expects of them, yeah. and that's something you've brought up as well, Megan, so what are your kind of thoughts on this still a taboo about it, about female pleasure? I think it is so sad, like at 2019, you think there's women in the public eye, like Amy Schumer, she'll speak openly about enjoying sex, mm -hmm. Amber, right? all these women, and I think the more we do it and the more we sit here mm. and have chats like this, the more accepted it will be. Mm. It's so annoying that for men it's fine. It's like you get a pat on the back, they're like, oh, they're yeah. gone. And how many girls do you sleep with? <laughs> yeah. And for us, it's like, oh, yeah, so uh, two, two last year. It's like, oh, my God, come on. <laughs> do you know what, though? You, you bring up a point there about, you know, Amy Schumer and Amber Rose. You know, the discussion is far more open in America, right? Am I, I, I think yeah. it is that. Whereas in the UK, still, it's still a bit quiet and no one's really going to... They don't want to get involved too much. They want to get into people's personal lives. They feel like they may be edging over. But do you think it's important now to be like, hell no, let's break open the, yeah, the, the ceiling and open it? It's definitely the culture and the way we've been like brought up yeah. and ingrained mm. in us not yeah. to be like that. Like If you go to Spain, people walking around the beach topless in like tiny <laughs> thongs. Like It's only England that are like all so prudish. And like, yeah. Oh my God, no, we can't speak about that. <laughs> no one wearing budgie smugglers saying, you know, <laughs> you can't swear. it doesn't really work out that way. Do you think it's related to temperature outside? Oh, well, it could be that, but we won't bring that in just yet. <laughs> Ellen, I suppose we have to bring you in on this as well and go, what do you think can be done to take away that stigma? So, um, actually, last week at Superdrug, we saw a sexual pleasure product sales peak. Okay. So we absolutely know that customers want these products. Mm. Um, and what we're seeing is a lot more suppliers and brands bringing us really great sexual pleasure products and actually starting to engage and talk about sexual pleasure as brands themselves, which is brilliant for us to see. Um, at Superdrug, we're all about giving our customers choice. So, mm. you know, whether you want to um, go into any one of our over 800 stores in the UK load up your basket <laughs> with sexual health products that's absolutely great but you know if you want to sit at home on the internet shop on superdrug.com and buy them in your own home um, privately you know that's absolutely great and that's something mm. that we want to encourage so all we can do as a brand is really just keep the conversation going about sexual pleasure I think it is interesting that you just said as well if people are still a little bit too embarrassed yeah. to go to the shop and get them you can get them online exactly. like it's not that hard to be exactly. involved in it and especially, I suppose, you know, you're a founder of this new range and it, it's, it really is incredible. Like, it's vegan, it's cruelty-free, all these yeah. things. How, do you have anything to add to any of this? Yeah, I uh, started thinking about this in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, I went into a high street chemist and looked at the range of products that were available and I, it made me really sad, actually. It made me really sad. The products were very medicinal, mm. they were very apologetic. And I just wanted to say, actually, do you know what? I might want to be having sex. I might want to be enjoying sex. <laughs> what are you doing for me? Yeah. And there was nothing there. So we developed this range of products that were bright and confident and all the products are designed to give you body confidence. And we say, you know, keep the lights on. Yeah. yeah. Don't be embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. <laughs> it's so true. My daughter will be dead. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, do you have anything to add to that about yeah. it leaving the lights on? Um. <laughs> it's, it's so true because I think a lot of like, whether it's like lube or condoms, like yeah. boys, they will just pick that up and be like, yeah, whack it on the till. They'll be like, who's watching? They go yeah. back the better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I need the extra large ones. Yeah. But as women, we'll be so sheepish, <laughs> so sheepish and be like, I'll pick that off the shelf. But now, obviously, look at these packages. They're so like bright. No one would know if that was in your mm. basket. It could be any. It could be makeup wipes. Like it's not like apologetic, like you say, and like really old-fashioned brand in this amazing it is, and you know what it's nice as well to see something that's really safe it's made for women by a woman which mm -hmm. i think it's also really empowering yeah yes good yeah. woman lucy. High five, lucy yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah we made them all natural we tried to be as environmentally sound as we could the packaging's sugarcane they're vegan yeah We're trying our best a lot of love has gone into that so and you can and you can yes. see it you know yeah. And I have to ask as well, you know, working within sexual screening, mm -hmm. what do you take away from all of this? So, um, like working on the front line, for me, 
obviously there's a lot of cuts in in the sexual yeah. health sector as well mm -hmm. and so people um, are coming in and they're sort of like embarrassed and sort of ashamed and, yeah. and they don't really know where to go or mm -hmm. how to book an appointment and actually the first ever case of super gonorrhea was diagnosed last month um, which is not really that surprising um, so what I would say to anyone who yeah. is having sex is to obviously wear condoms um, you can pick them up for free at any sexual health clinic yeah. and also get tested before and after each uh, sexual partner as well yeah I think that's astonishing though like I, I think it's astonishing the fact that you said it's not surprising that you've had your first case of <laughs> super gonorrhea I think that's absolutely madness so do you think yeah. people talking more about it well it's gonna that discussion because a lot of like in my generation our sexual health like education was not yeah. great and and my mother's uh, generation also even worse and um, and because no one was talking about mm -hmm. it yeah. and no one really knows um, where to go for an appointment they feel embarrassed they don't mm -hmm. want to like ring up you know you're, you're busy you're on the bus you don't want to phone and be like hi can I have a sexual mm -hmm. health appointment <laughs> where everyone can hear you <laughs> so you know, I think the more we open up and talk yeah. about it the better yeah, where, where can people kind of find more information if they are a little bit, want to be more discreet about it? Sure. Anything? Actually, you can book an appointment online um, okay. at www.zesty.co.uk. Good to know. Yeah. We can include that later. Also, I've just learned that so many things can be done online. Yeah. <laughs> Why use your phones anymore? <laughs> um, I suppose, Megan, what do you take from all that? You know, what Annika has just after said as well, all the research that they've had. In it the makes me so sad. Like, yeah. as a young woman, I think... If any of my friends ever felt like that and had any concerns that something was wrong with them and didn't go and talk to anyone, I'd be like, babe, like, don't be embarrassed. It's so, so sad. Because boys, like, they would walk into that clinic, strut in, get the oh, whole yeah. the free <laughs> bag of condoms, be like, I'm going to MAGA next week, like, load up. But as women, we get so embarrassed, and it's just because it's ingrained in us. And I think the more and more we talk about it and have mm. discussions like this, the more normal it will be. And we shouldn't be ashamed at all. I know. It's, it's something, when I was discussing with my friends about this coming up, it was the first time I properly chatted about to my mates, kind of going, oh, so I'm going to this, and like, what you make of this, and about these kind of facts. And it just started opening up a dialogue and a conversation I don't think I've properly ever had with my friends. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, uh, yeah. I think that's it. I mean, I think that's what came out by a survey, was that 81% yeah. of women had had unprotected sex, but only 50% had ever had an STI test because they're embarrassed, yeah. whatever these reasons are. Um, we want women to be having great protected sex and the, we want them to go and get tested for STIs without being embarrassed mm -hmm. about it. Because they're putting, these inhibitions are putting your sexual health and pleasure at risk. Yeah, which is not what you want. You want people to enjoy themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse that. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think this is now an important part of the debate, Annika, about it's this? It's so important and it's amazing that Woo Woo has now sort of brought us all together to open up the conversation mm -hmm. about sexual health. Um, and, you know, I've had women who are sort of, you know, in their 50s and 60s coming in who've never had an STI mm -hmm. um, checkup in their life. It's just because their daughter has said, well, mum, you know, you, you should go and really yeah. get checked out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, it's astonishing. And they... It, it's just it's great that we're all sort of talking yeah. about it and, and opening that up as well. I think you it's know. really interesting that you've said about older women because I feel like that maybe I've noticed maybe younger sisters and friends they're a little bit starting to you know open up a little bit more about the sexual and they're unapologetic about it let's be honest you shouldn't be sorry where it's still people around my age late 20s upwards that are still a little bit frightened and like you said like mothers <laughs> and people in their 50s and 60s that are and, and, and they are actually, uh, because they, they think, oh, I'm not at childbearing age, I'm not going to use protection. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, they end up with sort of STIs, and there's a big rise in that sort of um, age category yeah, of right. STIs. Um, and Helen? Do, do you know what you, I find really interesting as well is that um, we know that the most prevalent sort of increases in ha being tested as HIV positive is in the over 50s and actually young girls. Mm -hmm. um, so we launched the first um, self-test kit, um, HIV self-test mm -hmm. kit to the high street last year. Um, 
and just sort of making it more accessible for yes. people to sort of be able to just go into a store, pick one up, take it home and just mm -hmm. test yourself, know your status. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is just incredibly important and I think it's yeah. those age groups and, and you know, young girls, mm -hmm. you just, it's we need shocking. to make sure that that's not it's happening. Mm -hmm. And I think people are sometimes a bit needle phobic as well, yeah. but with this yeah. one, it's, it's just true. like so when, when you take your blood sugar, if you've ever had like diabetes mm -hmm. or anything, it's just a small pinprick. If you do it on the middle of your finger inside, it will hurt less. Mm. So that's perfect. Yeah, right mm. And I have to ask as well, from an, a retail perspective, yeah. what else are Superdrug doing to kind of help? Um, so we are the only um, retailer that has nurse clinics in stores all across the country. Um, so you, you know, if you don't want to go to the clinic, you can come into a Superdrug store, maybe you're picking up your shampoo, um, and you can also go into a nurse clinic and you can go and have a bunch of different healthcare services, but you can also go and get um, sexual health screening as well. Um, so, you know, it's about trying to make it as accessible as possible. And as you've already said, just being here today, sort of having those open conversations, having conversations on social media about sexual health and sexual health screening, it's so important. Um, and I think that's what we're trying to do as a brand as well. Which is great. Mm. That's amazing. So I remember me and my friends were very open about sex, but the worst fear was like going to the clinics, like, oh my God, is anyone going to mm. see me? So the fact that you're doing it in super drug now, you could be like, I'm just looking for mascara, it's fine. <laughs> 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 It should be. It should be just so yes. normalised. At the moment it is not and this is why it's important that we're having this conversation and I have to say Megan what would your, be, your advice be to young women now? As long as you're right. practising safe sex it's consensual. It's a way of, for me, it's a way of expressing yourself. It's like between two people. It's mm -hmm. like a lovely moment. You shouldn't have to apologise. Men wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So just practise safe sex. Keep your woo woo fresh and maintained, and you're all good to go. <laughs> 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 um, I think at this stage we might open it up to the floor for any questions that we have there. Anyone questions for influencers? Yes. Um, so you came from a reality show. Um, Emma and I have just come from a reality show. What kind of stigmas do you think you faced? especially with sh slut shaming being a woman um, coming out of the show what what kind of pressures did you did you face with the slut shaming topic because i know you had some cases of that in like the media and stuff like that yeah. you said about sleeping with the two people which is completely normal mm. um, yeah so what pressures did you face yeah, so after the eight weeks and now I was with like a guy for I think like two weeks, slept with him, and then got with the boy I left with and then was with for like several months. But I got so much stick and it's like men would never ever get this. Yeah. Um, but I think the fact I owned it, maybe even if it helped like 5% of girls think, Do you know what, it's fine. Because in the outside world, you would, if you dated someone for a week, you would naturally sleep with them. If you both have that chemistry and that vibe, you would do it. So yeah. why would I yeah. be like apologetic and do what I thought people wanted to see on the outside. Right. That's what I think, you've got to be a little bit selfish. And as long as you're being like protected and safe about it, yeah. it's consensual, do what you want. And I think because you owned it as well, you made a really good point mm. of owning it and being like, I'm a strong, empowered yeah. woman. Yeah. If I want to have sex, I can have sex. Um, I think that kind of also shocked the public as well, because they're like, okay, this girl, she's like a feminist, she's empowered, she's like, said that that's something that she wants to do and it's been safe. So I think that shocked the public quite a lot. So Even journalists, when I come out, they were like, are you not embarrassed? What do you think your family think? I'd be like, I think they'll think good on me for enjoying my life. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's your t-shirt specially made. Yeah. To stop judging. Yeah, when I went on to um, yeah. that show, I had the yeah. t-shirt, don't judge women on their sexual history. And it's yeah. true. That was so yeah. powerful though. That was a Great yes, teacher to have, and also, but also let's get the two fingers up at the naysayers. And that's what yeah, you need to do yeah. sometimes, right? Yeah. To yeah. to shut them down. Yeah, exactly. Do we have another question there? Yeah, um, about like the whole topic of sex. I know even at twenty two, I still find it quite difficult, even in like loving relationships I've been in, to actually say what I want. And this person can love you, and you think, oh, they they want what's amazing for you but actually I feel there's a lot of ego that goes into sex and you can be with someone for years and still be like mm. you don't know what I want <laughs> <laughs> it's just so difficult You're to bring it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you bring up the topic without offending anyone but also make your sex life better 
I think um, yeah. sometimes yeah. 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 I've, exactly I've had a lot of women come into the clinic saying the same thing and mm. even though we are just sort of testing them we are there to give the advice as well um, and we used to have health advisors before all the cuts happened um, but they used to say something like if you write it down in an email mm. or write it down and leave a note if, if you're embarrassed to have this kind of conversation in person then you know you, you sort of write a letter mm -hmm. um, and you give it to them I know it sounds a bit Weird, yeah. but you know it does. It does help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lucy <laughs> says. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be my advice: is to to, to write it down. Mm. And as you said, as draw a, a diagram. Yeah, you said leave the lights leave on. Leave the lights on. You That's you've it. got to have that confidence. Yeah. You you mm. have to, and you have to say what you want. Otherwise, you might go on for twenty years in a relationship where it's, it's just not working. Okay. <laughs> it's just it's just sometimes an element of like performing. Yeah, and everyone's like the women are so concerned with how they look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the men's. I think with stuff. age as well um, comes, you know, I'm way more confident now as a 33 mm. year old woman mm. yeah. than I was when I was in my 20s. Yeah. And I don't know what happened, but like overnight, I was just like, do you know what? Don't care. That's it. Stop yeah. caring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's like why not as well. I think yeah. like why would you not say these things because it's affecting say like your sexual empowerment. So I think. And I think the sexual yeah. partner will pick up on it if you're doing some like, not like fake performance, but you're like, oh yeah, it's really good. If you're actually into it, I think they'll find that more appealing. Like sometimes I think, oh my god, am I double chins out? Am I looking awful? But the fact that I'm enjoying it is probably getting off on it more. Men so. don't notice any of that though. They, yeah, they're, they're just not looking at that. to enjoy yourself. Yeah. That's it. And we've got a little bit of feedback actually from um, the Instagram. So we've got um, at London Lifestyle Blogger said, Well said, we are too prudish. This should definitely be talked about more. I have to agree with that. I'm yes. totally yeah. prude and I'm so glad I'm here to have expanded my knowledge. Um, <laughs> but there's a bit of a question there. We've got where can I go for info on sexual health screening and smear? So I suppose that's more aimed at you. Yeah, so um, normally smear tests uh, you can get done at your GP. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be a nurse there that will do them for you. Some sexual health clinics still do those, um, mm -hmm. but for a sort of sexual health, you could go to www.zesty.co.uk, mm -hmm. or you can actually um, go to a pharmacy or, yeah. you know, super come to one of our clinics. Yes. Yeah, come to a super drug nurse clinic. You're making it very easy. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of options. Anyway. Yeah. I think we've got another question coming up, but uh, slowly but surely we will yeah. get there. <laughs> 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 one can only write so quickly. <laughs> So it's embarrassing talking about STIs with partners. How do I open up about it? Actually, that is a really good question, I actually think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really good if you are starting out a new relationship yeah. um, to go together. Mm -hmm. And I've seen an increase in couples actually coming to the clinic. Mm -hmm. um, and they've not had sex, they're coming to the clinic and they'll have a, a STI screen together. Not in yeah. the same room. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a couple <laughs> massage. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, and I think that demonstrates real trust in the relationship yeah, yeah. as well. So I think, you know, you could just say, you, be honest and open, look, how, mm. when was the last time you had a sexual health screen? And you should be asking these questions um, to your partner. Um, and then, you know, suggest going to a sexual, I know it's not the best, like, date night you've ever had. <laughs> but at least then you know, in some 10 days, that you're all clear, so. Yes. You can't take someone's word for it, can you? That's yeah. what I mean. In like, the heat yes. of the moment, everyone's going to be like, oh yeah, last week, babe, I'm absolutely fine. Like, no. Mm -hmm. Until like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I need the text. <laughs> I got a text. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but I think it is so important though, it is just to, I know some people might be embarrassed about going, okay, look, we're getting to the next part of our relationship and they might feel a little bit uneasy about it, but I think it's so important to just, like your sexual health is as important as your You have to health. respect yourself mm -hmm. and, it is and yes. be like, you're yes. not coming near me unless we know that, you know, we're both health and, you know, safe and um, healthy. And I think so, people respect that more, don't yeah. they? Exactly. Like, you've got respect for yourself, they're like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. 100%. I think if we want to break down the taboos as well within the nation, we also have to have those conversations with, in our own sort of couples of and course, our partners. Yeah. So it's like the most important place to start, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. I think we've got an, another question there. Do you agree with contraceptive pill? That's from us at Miss... I can't <laughs> say that, but we're going to go with it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that goes as well to yourself then. 
do I believe in the contraceptive pill? Yeah, do you agree with the con uh, contraceptive pill? Well, that's what he says. yeah, I think everyone should. <laughs> I mean, everyone should have a choice um, to protect themselves. Yes. Like, if they yeah. don't want to have a child, um, as long as you, you know, use condoms up until you've had the all clear, yeah. then and then you use contraception. Mm. Contraception will not stop you getting an STI. Mm. Um, so that's the only real important. I think that's a really important point. There was mm. a survey done that said that sixty percent of twenty-year-old women thought that they were protected from STIs with the contraceptive pill. Yeah, which goes no back to sex education. No girls, you really need to look after yourselves much better than that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and of course there's obviously other options if they don't want to use their contraceptive yeah. pill or they can't take it for certain health reasons exactly so there's lots of other information which you can find on the website that yeah. you've shared already and um, how can I avoid getting a UTI which is very important <laughs> <laughs> come on girls let's just I it. mean as a woman who suffers chronically yeah. with with urine infections and yeah. it's a pain in the arse um, so I would drink lots and lots and lots of water always shower before and after sex as well so, so not just go to the bathroom also shower shower i would shower yeah okay because most of the time and also i have to say about the wipes you've got yeah. wipes cranberry wipes which you can also use mm. yep you can have a you can have a wipe down after sex exactly. as well if you are comfortable where you are you're kind of just like oh okay i don't want to yeah. move but at least you can keep these wipes handy yeah. and you're good <laughs> I'm the worst for that. I'm like, oh no, babe, can you go to the toilet for me? <laughs> yeah, 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 literally. <laughs> Someone order the Domino's. I'll be there in a few minutes. <laughs> Do we have any more questions, or is that where we'll leave it? I think that's where. Oh, well, I think actually, just about the question with the contraceptive yeah. pill. The question I've probably been asked most throughout every sexual partner I've had is when I've asked them to wear a condom, they're like, aren't you on the pill? Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like guys... That angers me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like they don't know, girls yeah. so much. It feels like but girls. it's like pregnancy is the issue. It's like they don't know STIs yeah. exist. Oh, well, yeah. that makes me so Well, they just don't want to wear them. And I think that's because a lot of pe men and women don't yeah. realise that there are so many different brands of condoms out there. And it's not one size fits mm -hmm. all, you know, they're all different sizes, as we know. Um, so, you know, <laughs> why would you why would you try and fit into a small T-shirt if you're an extra large? You know, it's it's a yeah. 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 large yeah. <laughs> But if you go to um, there's a Freedom's shop actually. Um, it's a website and they sell all different types of condoms. Mm. So I mean, big, small, super thin, like the whole range. So and that actually will make it feel way more comfortable for them yeah. as well. Yeah. So. And I think unless they can prove to you via text or whatever tests they've had done and you can see it back, mm. then okay, then you'll like use the pill. But other than that, you want to know that they're clean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you need the text. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you use the text. Um, do we have any last comments or anything? I, I think we might leave it there, lads. Uh, I just want to say much. thank you to everyone being here. Thank you for this open discussion and thank you to everyone at home and um, keep keep your eyes peeled over the next few days on a uh, woo woo fun and super drug social media channels where there'll be more exclusive uh, worship your woo woo content so uh thank you very much for watching and take care lads Bye. thank you thank you <laughs>